Man, this was a crazy story here. So Tommy Dreamer apparently wanted to kill Paul Heyman. Yeah, he wanted to kill Paul Heyman at WrestleMania 17. And I'm going to read y'all the article here because I'm going to give my opinion about it afterwards. This was all pro wrestling stories. It said, for several years, Extreme Championship Wrestle was home to all that was access, whether it be blood, violence, or sexuality. ECW was the renegade promotion that had pushed the envelope on all things extreme. Tommy Dreamer came into the ECW with a pretty boy type persona and were often jeered mercilessly because of it. It wasn't until he embraced countless lashes at the Sandman's hands that Dreamer's charity emerged fully realized. Hold on one second. Every promotion has their heart someone that has their heartbeat. Tommy Dreamer was the lifeblood of ECW. He was synonymous with all things extreme championship wrestling. Paul Heyman had a vision for Tom Dreamer's in-ring persona. I always explained to Tommy the inspiration for his character was Bruce Willis as John McClane and Die Hard, explained Heyman in an interview with a Bleacher Report. An ordinary man pushed to extraordinary circumstances who have no option left with the result of extreme measures just to survive the form of the world. Great booking! But for as much as Dreamer gave in front of the camera, it's what he committed to the company and Paul Heyman behind the scenes that soon made his passion for the industry descend into an abyss, anger, regret, and depression. Tommy Dreamer held a ministerial role in ECW, could have considered Heyman's right hand man. He was a part of creative, paying off talent, and more. Even more, Dreamer seemingly looked as Heyman as a mentor, friend, and business associate. When ECW went out of business, I was 29 years old, Dreamer explained in the House of Hardcore podcast. I had a lot of my money, my parents' money, trying to float the company. I thought me and Paul were super tight, but he screwed me over big time. He was in the WWE the whole time. I had turned down hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars to go to WCW, and now I was unemployed. It was impossible not to feel a sense of betrayal. But even more so, Dreamer had financially compromised his career and family for Heyman. I went from a $750,000 offer and Paul crying to me that if I leave ECW, it will go out of business. Meanwhile, he was getting a paycheck from WWE. I don't begrudge him, but that then I did. Feeling alone. I was depressed as the press can be. On his podcast, Tommy Dreamer further expressed how despite having success, it meant nothing. I had women. I had fame. I had everything. And yet it was the worst time of my life. It really was. I was making decent money on the indies, but I had lived at home. Paul Heyman tries to make it right. Paul Heyman would attempt to make amends for all that had transpired between him and Tommy Dreamer, the opportunity at WrestleMania 17. Tommy Dreamer looked forward to the opportunity, but it came and went. WrestleMania 17 in Houston was where Paul Heyman told me I was going to debut. Dreamer explained they had TLC and Spike came in, Rhino came in, and Lita came in. That was supposed to be my spot. Then it got Enox. There was going to be a hardcore 24 thing that would be all about you. That's with the straw that broke his back. Dreamer began considering he would eradicate Paul Heyman. Tommy Dreamer motion had come to a head. I remember I did a show and saw a sign that said, Fireman's Welcome. I was in Houston. I did an indie show. What is this? I'm from New York. What do you mean that's welcome? I was... This is where I took a sinister turn. Oh, you're allowed to bring those in the venue was the response. I was across the street from the Astrodome. It resonated in my head so, so much. I'll tell you what I wanted to do. It's sick that I think this. At WrestleMania, I was going to hop the rail and whack Paulie in the back of the head at the announce table. Then I was going to whack myself, the ultimate martyr. I was going to hit my pose crack boom and pull the trigger because I was that insane. That's why I was thinking about every day. I was like, I will go down history, boom, pop. Jim Ross to the rescue. When he doesn't know that he would have gone with it. One voice ensured it would have happened. First, I think it was an angle to our shot, I'm dreaming, described on this podcast. I was so severely depressed and mental with rage, I needed help. Randomly, I get a call from a number I didn't know, I didn't pick up. I remember having those thoughts, which was bad. Which, think about the horribleness that I would have done to my legacy. On the other hand, the phone call came from Jim Ross. Ross told the trouble grabber that WWE remained interested in his talents, representing the silver hope for Dreamer. It changed his mindset, and Dreamer had a moment of clarity after this conversation with JR. Yeah, man, it gets crazy like that, man. And 
considering that Tommy Dreamer turned down millions of dollars to stay loyal to a dude only to save his company, only for him to abandon the company, to jump ship to the competition. I feel him. Hundred ra- I mean, 700 racks in 90s money was crazy. It would have been nasty. And then Dreamer's, and then, and then Tommy Dreamer's batshit crazy, man. I mean, just look at his matches from the ECW days. Just look at a lot of the wild stuff. He even said that he wanted to get shot in the ring, and Terry Funk crazy ass had to talk him out of it. Terry Funk had to talk this man out of it. This nigga nuts, man. <laughs> but let me know what you guys think, man. Subscribe to the like button, please.